بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين السلام عليكم dear brothers and sisters inshallah we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted all of the amal all of the worships and we hope that we have the tawfiq to continue with the rest and the remainder of this month gaining the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with. On the 11th day of the month of Ramadan, the dua we have received from the Ahlul Bayt reads as follows. Allahumma habib ilayya fihil ihsan wa karrih ilayya fihil fusuqa wal asyan وحرم علي فيه السخط والنيران بعونك يا غياث المستغيثين. This dua in some ways may be similar to some of the other duas that we've had in this month that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help to be able to implement His instructions to be able to carry out his commands, to be able to abstain from and refrain from what he has forbidden us from. But it's different. There's a similarity and there's a difference. Sometimes when we are asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us avoid these sins, to help us fulfill obligations. What we're asking God to help us on is simply carrying out the deed. In other words, there are obligations and there are forbiddances, things that we have been told not to do. And obviously it's difficult to avoid those sins with the strong temptations sometimes we have the whispers of the shaitan, the whispers of the human shayateen with all the glamour they put in presenting these sins to make it so attractive. We already have a hard time with the inner temptation that we have, but beyond that, the shayateen amongst humanity in Western societies are filling society with so much corruption, with so much advertisement of sin, they are whispering the shayateen, and whispering as shayateen, in pretty much hour of our day, if we just flip on the television, or go outside to any store, just go on the street, there's too much of that. So we have inner inclinations, we have desires, we have temptation, and then we have what provokes that externally, the billboards, the movies, television, internet, just going out on the street, the way people are dressed, and so on and so forth. So we have a tough time avoiding those sins and sometimes it becomes difficult to implement the wajibat, the obligations. And then what we do because of that is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. We ask Him to provide us with assistance. Take our hand. That's one way we ask that question. The end result of what we're asking God here in this dua is similar. To be able to do what is right, to be able to do what is good, and to be able to abstain from and avoid what is bad, what is wrong, what is evil. But the way we're asking is very different. What we say is, Allahumma habib ilayya fihil ihsan. Oh Allah, 
cause me to love and to like Al-Ihsan, doing good, showing kindness, acting in a positive manner, in a positive fashion. So instead of saying, God, make me do Ihsan, make me do good, make me show kindness to others, it says, Oh Allah, make me love showing kindness to others. Make me love wanting to do good and acting good and behaving well. This is something that is higher than the previous. In other words, we start in this way. We start uh, being a bit further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having a lot of desire for what is wrong for us to do. Our nafs is amara bisu. It constantly commands us to evil. And it's not really inclined towards wanting to do good. We want that to change. In fact, avoiding those sins, that taqwa that is spoken of, that starts off by avoiding those sins, it's supposed to gradually lead to this. That the person that used to be such, that what attracted their attention, what drove them were desires and temptations which lead to sin, which lead to not fulfilling obligation. Now, what's happened internally, the spirit that has through that training of avoiding sin uh, come about in one is the spirit of taqwa, not just the practice of taqwa. The spirit of taqwa, the quality of taqwa within is this, that the person's uh, driving force, what motivates them, what attracts their attention is no longer their desire, that is controlled. Even the desire, what it likes, is only what God has permitted and what God has put forth. Let me put this uh, out, I think it will help this understanding. What our desires want, what we call uh, desire, which leads to temptation and sin, our desires are actually not there for us to commit sin. Our desires are supposed to drive us towards things that God wants us to be involved with. He says, Kulu min razaqnakum. Take from the good, the tayyib, that I have provided for you. The desire is supposed to drive us towards the tayyib, but if it's left untamed, if it's left untrained, on top of what is tayyib and what is good to desire, it also desires things that are not good for it, not good for the soul, and they are referred to as khaba'ith. It's khabith, it's evil, it's wrong. If we train that nafs, eventually it's supposed to be such that the desire is controlled. What it desires is tayyibat. And it's not only desire anymore. It's spiritual inclinations. It is aql, the intellect, and what it, whether it's the aql, desires, the fitra, the spiritual inclinations, it's all pushing me towards and causing me to like, to do good in all arenas of life. Developing that is really important. Developing the love to do good is really important. So that I would not even want to do what is evil, I would be more inclined to do what is good. What we're asking here is that, Allahumma habib ilayya fihi al-ihsan. Don't just make me do ihsan, but cause me to like to do ihsan. If that changes in us, there will be a huge impact on how we're going to behave as individuals and also as communities and as society. If people within a society change, their taste buds change, 
What they like now is different than what they previously liked. They used to like corruption, they used to like sin, now things have changed, they like ihsan. So, the reverse of that is also said, which I think I've already explained. وَكَرِّهْ إِلَيَّ فِيهِ الْفُسُوقَ وَالْعَسْيَانِ God, make me hate and despise and dislike الفسوق, ugly deeds. Sins are, brothers and sisters, truly ugly and filthy. Even the ones that, due to our upbringing, due to us allowing our nafs to do whatever it wishes, we do not understand how ugly, how filthy, how nasty certain acts are. Even they are ugly and filthy. They're terribly wrong. If we, sh if we realize the essence of them, we would have disliked and despised them as well. But unfortunately we haven't. So here we're asking Allah, uh, we need this help so that we don't like to do evil. كَرِّهْ إِلَيَّ فِيهِ الْفُسُوقَ وَالْعَسِيَانِ Disobedience. Allah, help me dislike and despise disobedience. وَحَرِّمْ عَلَيَّ فِيهِ السَّخَطَ وَالنِّيرَانِ Now the result of that, if one is able to gradually develop themselves where they no longer even like to be involved with sin, they despise that, and they like to do good, then they are naturally going to be moving away from God's wrath and punishment in the hereafter and that's what we're asking oh Allah make it haram or forbid hellfire on me forbid your wrath on me help me never enter the realm and the domain of your wrath and your hellfire I, I ask all of this بعونك, your help your assistance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assists that's one of his attributes he assists and he's been assisting us. But here we're asking him with through that attribute, Ya Ghiyath al Mustaghithin, that we've had, uh, I'm sure most of us, if not all of us, have read in other du'as this concept in Dua al uh, in particular. And Ghiyath al Mustaghithin means the one who is going to help and respond to the call of the person who is calling for help and assistance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is waiting for us to call for help and for him to respond. He is truly ghiyath al mustaghithin Of course, he has other attributes. Even if a person doesn't call, he provides assistance. But if a person asks, if a person asks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take their hand. The problem we have is that many times we're not really asking for assistance. We're saying it, but we're not really asking it. If we really want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will truly give. Most definitely. Inshallah, we ask Him through His aun, His assistance, to provide us with these great requests that the Imam has taught us to ask on this day. والحمد لله رب العالمين